This is an example of the AC analysis tutorial in Circuit Tutor on level 4. So we're going to uh, do a problem of the second type, which is going to be source transformations um, that are a bit more complicated than the first problem type involving source transformations. Uh, now we could view examples here, but given that uh, they're rather lengthy, I'm going to go straight into a problem. Okay, so because this is a source transformation problem, um, our goal will be to uh, reduce this, if possible, to a single loop or single node pair circuit. Those are the only types of analysis that are allowed here. Um, and these problems are actually designed uh, such that that is possible. So we go straight into the circuit editor because this is, again, source transformations. And we do have uh, the instructions here for the source transformation mode, which you can review as you need. Uh, these are written instructions, uh, fairly detailed. And so this is the circuit we need to simplify. Notice that this is in the phasor domain already because the voltage and current source values are complex numbers or phasors and the impedances are all in ohms uh, and the capacitor values in particular and inductor values are uh, complex numbers in ohms rather than henrys or farads so we're already in the phasor domain so we do not need to do a phasor transform um, as you do in some problems so now our goal is to simplify this as much as possible so before we start doing any source transformations we always want to see if there's any series parallel simplifications um, or other types of simplifications that can be carried out here. And remember our goal here is to find this SOT current I0. So in studying uh, this circuit diagram, let's see. Um, yes, I do see two elements in parallel, namely this capacitor and this resistor. If you notice, they, those both have the same, are connected to the same pair of nodes. So we're able to combine those and combining those, that would be basically uh, negative uh, J28 divided by 7 minus J4. So we'll need a calculator to compute that. I'm using the product over the sum formula uh, for combining impedances in uh, parallel. And there are no other impedances in parallel there. So let's use our calculator, because I wanted to minimize that. Um, Okay, so again, um, I want to be uh, have a new value for an impedance, and so that should be in rectangular mode. So I'm going to go ahead and change my mode. And of course, if it was in real mode, none of the complex number calculations would work. So I'm going to first go and put this now into rectangular mode because I want my answer in rectangular form, and that'll be the easiest way to get that. So now I exit the mode setting. And now I can verify that I'm in fact in rectangular mode here, as it shows. And also, uh, well, the degree isn't actually relevant in rectangular mode, but okay. So I want to combine that. So that would be negative uh, J28. So I have negative I28 um, divided by the sum, which we can do mentally. That's just uh, 7 minus J4. So 7 minus i4, using the i on the period key here. And we're using implicit multiplication because this calculator allows that. Click Enter, and there's our value in rectangular form. So I'm now going to type that in here, 1.723 minus j3.015. And notice that that's red now because that's not a proper type of um, value for a capacitive impedance. It's a fully complex number, and that means that we need to change that symbol to an impedance symbol. That's why it's uh, indicated red there. And you want to do that before we uh, complete check the combination, otherwise we would get an error message. And now, uh, since this one was in parallel and is being incorporated into this, I need to change that to an open circuit. Um, of course, if I changed it to a short, I would be shorting out this as well, and that would make no sense at all, because it would say we didn't have those elements to begin with, which we did. So I'm going to press the delete key here and get rid of that. 
And now I can check that combination. And that is correct. And I'm going to go back uh, full screen here. Um, and actually, I'm just going to exit the circuit editor real quick and go back in, uh, do the little bug there that we need to fix just to get the uh, everything positioned correctly. So now we have um, uh, this circuit, and we see what else we can do with that. Um, I don't see any additional elements in series or parallel now. Um, and so, and I'll check if there's anything that's current splittable, and I don't see that uh, because there's nothing uh, whose current would be dictated by the combination of those two sources. So there's no further simplifications that we can do here um, other than to do a source transformation. Now remember, whenever we transform this, we do here have a current source in parallel with the resistor, and you'd say, well, you could transform that, um, and that might be helpful. But the problem is we cannot transform that because we would lose our SOT variable I0. So we can never touch those two elements. We have to simply work with the rest of the circuit. So let's think what else we could do potentially. Um, so let's see here. Um, so what would help would be to transform um, these two things. We have a current source in parallel with an impedance. And if we transform that, it'll be connected between this node and this node here. Uh, well, and also over there. And that would put um, this impedance in series with the 1 ohm and allow us to combine those. So that would be a useful thing to do. Um, we could possibly examine other things. We have a voltage source in series with a resistor here, um, but changing that into a current source in parallel um, would be connected again from here to here. And I don't see that that would be in parallel with anything else. So that really would not be helpful. So we're going to do this one instead. So we'll change this to a voltage source. And we can just do that by clicking over here. And then I'm going to actually correct the polarity of that right away because um, I want it to have the plus sign where the positive arrowhead was previously. This is our diagram, which is normally enclosed in a frame here, which is just invisible as an artifact here, but um, that is enclosed. Um, and I want the plus sign there to match the, uh, or rather the head here to match the plus sign here to have the correct polarity, as is always the case in source transformations. Okay, so um, then I'm going to move uh, this impedance to be in series. So I'm going to delete that by pressing the delete key and then just drag. Oh, well, it wants me to enter this first, I guess. So let's uh, enter that first. So we need to multiply the current source times this impedance, and we'll need a calculator for that. So let's see, that uh, current source was 6 angle 105 degrees. And I need to get this in polar form. So I'm first going to switch the mode into polar form, because that will be more convenient. I'll give you the answer directly in the form that I want. So I'll enter that. And now <clears throat> I'm going to enter um, the 6 angle 105, so 6. And I could use little e, and then in the exponent, I'd have to write i times pi divided by 180 times this angle, which is the 105 degrees, because remember the 83, 84 always assumes that the uh, argument of a complex exponential is in radians, even if you're in degree mode, which is kind of a quirk of this calculator. The 89 does not have that quirk, and it would be easier to use for this purpose. So what I've done is I've defined this variable that contains already the little e to the i pi over 180, this variable e. And now I just raise that to the power of the 105. And that'll take care of that using implicit multiplication there. And then I need to multiply that times that impedance. So I'll put a parenthesis there, open parenthesis, uh, 1.72. Uh, minus i times 3.02, close parenthesis, and we can enter that, and that gives me my value. So I'm going to enter that here on the screen, so that's going to be 20.5 um, 
0.85, and then the angle will be 44.66. And I'm going to go back full screen here before I uh, do that, and then move this back up here. Uh, so now I can move that since I've entered this. And um, check that that looks OK. And now I'll check that transformation. And that is correct. And we've updated the previous circuit. So now we see we have several things in series that we can combine. So for example, we have um, the resistor and the impedance are in series. And there is no SOT voltage on either one of those. So we're eligible to combine those. Um, so that's easy to do. I'll just add change the 1.72 to a 2.72 here. And then correspondingly change this to a short circuit by clicking over here. Or I could right click and do that. Um, and then I check that combination and that is correct. Then I can also combine these two voltage sources in series. And before I do that I need to figure out are they fighting each other or helping each other. So in this case um, if I just Think about this loop alone, for example. Um, just imagining there was only a single loop. This uh, source would cause current to flow through the passive elements <clears throat> from uh, high voltage here to low voltage. So it would be going counterclockwise. And this would do the same thing. It's also going to cause current to flow if this one was a short uh, from this in this direction or tend to promote that. Of course, there's other elements here which we're ignoring. But just for this purpose, that's sufficient to consider. Um, it's also like two. Uh, batteries and a flashlight with the correct orientation, the plus to the minus. So that means we add these two values and we have to do that on a calculator. There's no way to do that without a calculator. Um, if you think you can do that without a calculator, um, you're mistaken. So let's use a calculator for that. And basically we have 3 plus uh, 20.8 times the, that E uh, constant that I've already defined raised to the uh, 44.6 degrees. And again, I'm just using that E shortcut as a way of making this easier. Um, oh, let's see. I meant to um, add 3, not answer. So I, I clicked the wrong key there. So I'm just going to delete that and enter 3, and then I have to go into insert mode here, plus the 20.8. So I'll put that back. OK, and then I'll enter that. And that gives me um, the value in polar form that I want. So I'm, I could replace either source. I'll just replace this one. And we'll make that 20.03, or sorry, 23.03, I mean. And then the angle is uh, 39.35 degrees. And then I change this source to a short circuit. And I'll go back then full scale. Um, and so I'm done there. I'll check that combination. And that is, again, correct. OK, so we've made some progress. Now we look for additional things in series and parallel, and I don't believe uh, that there are any at this point. Here we have sort of a, um, a delta type of connection here, it might be called, uh, with these three different nodes involving these. So we can't do anything there. But what we could do is to uh, transform. Remember, we can't transform this one because of that SOT variable, that SOT current. That prevents us from transforming this one. So instead, I'm going to have to transform uh, this. and. So I will drag this down here, and I'm going to drag that up there and put the resistor down here, or the impedance rather, um, and then add some additional wires here and here to reconnect the circuit properly. Um, so again, I'm going from this node here to this node, and I'm still connected between those same two nodes. Um, now I have to change this into a current source, remember, because I'm doing a source transformation. And I want the head of the current source to be where the plus side was before, or pointing in that direction. So I need to reverse that polarity from the default. And then I need to compute the value of this new current source um, to finish this. 
So that's going to be this number divided by this. So again, there I'll need a calculator. And that's going to be, we want that in polar form. So I'm already in polar mode, so that's good. And so I will take my uh, 23.0 um, divided by parentheses 2.72 minus i 3.02, close parentheses. And then I'll click enter there. Oh, but I forgot the angle. Okay, so before I do that, I, need, I missed the angle there. So we will go into insert mode and need to put the E here. Uh, power uh, 39.3 degrees. Okay. So that's better. We have the voltage now divided by the impedance, so that should be correct. And so now I'll enter that value here. Um, so that should be 5.659. And the phase angle will be 87.29. And let's check that source transformation. And that is correct. So now um, that I've done the source transformation, I have this, these two impedances now in parallel, which allows further simplification. So I want to combine those. Um, and I could do product over the sum, but that's rather hard to compute. So I'm going to use the reciprocal formula. And once again, I will need a calculator for that. So and now I want my answer to be in rectangular form because it's an impedance. And in circuit tutor, impedances are entered in rectangular form. So I'm going to go change the mode and go back down um, to rectangular form and select that and then clear out of that. Um, so now we see in rectangular mode, which is what I want. Um, and now I need to do um, basically the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of these two impedances uh, when we combine in parallel. So I'm going to have 1 divided by, open a parenthesis for the denominator, and then I'm going to have uh, well, it's 1 over j2, but I could actually do that in my head. 1 over j is negative j, and 1 over 2 is 0.5. So that would be uh, negative 0.5i. Or you could have entered it, but I just prefer to do that instead of having to write the reciprocal there. Um, so again, 1 over j is negative j, because remember, j squared, the product, is negative 1 by definition. So 1 over j is always negative j. And then we also have to take the reciprocal of the 2, because you're taking the reciprocal of a product, and that means you have to take, multiply the reciprocal of each part of the product, both the j and the 2. Sometimes people, uh, for some reason, don't realize that they have to take the reciprocal of the 2, but of course that is essential to get the right answer. Okay, so we have that. Uh, that's the reciprocal of that, plus um, now the 1 divided by that other complex number, which is 2.72 minus uh, I 3.02. close parenthesis for that, and then have to close another parenthesis for the entire uh, denominator. And that should be the complete expression. So that gives us our value. Um, and since this one is already a general impedance, that'll avoid having to change the type of that. So I'm going to enter that as 1.289 uh, plus J 2.483. It doesn't matter whether I put the J before or after the number because, of course, multiplication is commutative, so that doesn't matter. Okay, and uh, then I'm going to go over here, and this element needs to be deleted since I'm combining it in parallel. So that changes to an open circuit, not a short, of course, because that would short both of the original elements. It would make no sense. Um, and so now I'll go back full screen here and check that combination, and that is correct. And now, um, remember I have a current source um, in parallel with that impedance. 
Uh, so in order to simplify further, I'd like to make that a voltage source in series with the impedance. That would put this impedance in series with this one and allow further simplification. So to do that, I'll just change this to, to a uh, voltage source. And again, I need to reverse the polarity of that because um, the head of the arrow is on the top there. Um, and now I need to divide, or I'm sorry, multiply the current source times the impedance because uh, V equals IZ. So I have to multiply those two numbers to get the value of the voltage source. So let's do that. Oops, I meant to minimize that. Okay, and we want our result to come out in uh, polar form now. So we need to change the mode again back to polar form. So we'll go down here. And enter that. And now we're going to uh, multiply the current value, which is 5.65. And then we have use that uh, E variable to make it easy. Raise that to the 87.2 degrees. Okay. And we multiply that times, open parenthesis, uh, 1.289. Uh, plus J, or in this case I on the calculator, uh, 2.483. Close the parenthesis and enter that. And so that will give me my new voltage value of 15.81. And the angle is 149.8 degrees. And so that gives me that value. Um, but remember that that's, uh, yeah, that's the voltage source. And we also need to move the impedance. So I'll delete that by, I uh, could click the delete button if you want, or the delete key on the keyboard. And then just drag that up into the proper position there. So now I put that in series. Remember we started out in parallel, so we have to now be in series. Okay, so we'll check that source transformation. And that is correct. And now we can combine the resistor and the generalized impedance. It doesn't matter that there's a voltage source in between uh, because we're not interested in, well, it just doesn't matter because um, those things can be switched. So we'll add eight to this value. That'll make the one become a nine. And then this becomes a short since we're removing that element. And we'll check that and that's correct. And now, um, to further simplify, we're going to have to do one more source transformation here. So we're going to make this now um, a uh, current source. So we change that into a current source and remove its, or reverse rather, its polarity um, because we want the head of the source to be where the plus sign was previously. And now, again, we have to do some math. So we'll go back to the calculator. And, uh, oops, to minimize there. And uh, again, we want our answer in polar form. So we are in polar form, so we're good there. And so we have, um, now we have to divide because we want to find I. So we have V divided by Z gives us I. So that will be 15.8 times the E uh, raised to the 149. degrees and then that will be divided by the impedance which is the 9.289 oh and I forgot the uh, parenthesis actually there so let's put in a parenthesis 9.289 uh, plus I times uh, 2.483 Close parenthesis. So that should be the value of the current. And so we'll enter that here. So that's going to be 1.643. And the phase angle here will be 134.0. So I'll just call it 134. And then also we need to make this now in parallel with that current source. So we'll drag it over here instead of in series to complete the transformation. 
and then we need to add another wire to reconnect those things. So we add new, always gives us wires by default. And we've got the polarity correct, so that should be all fine. So now we'll just check that, and that is correct. And now, finally, after all this work, we're down to a single node pair circuit. So now we can simplify further. Um, in particular, let's combine these two current sources. And we don't want to combine these because one of them has the passive elements. One of the passive elements has this SOT current, and that would be lost if we combine these in parallel. So rather than doing anything with those, we're just going to combine the current sources, which will then uh, allow us to use the current divider formula directly. So first of all, we have to think about whether these current sources are helping or fighting each other. So this source is, uh, there, there are only two nodes here. Remember this node on top here, and then the one here um, on the bottom. So this current source is pumping charge from this top node to the bottom one. This one is pumping, on the other hand, from the bottom to the top. So those are opposing each other. So if we're going to remove this source, um, we need to subtract its value from this one, not add it. Okay, you always have to check that polarity very carefully. So let's go into the calculator to do that arithmetic. And we want our answer in polar form. We are in polar mode, so we're going to take um, two, two angle 45 degrees. So we have two, that big uh, E variable uh, raised to the 45. And then we're going to subtract the 1.64. e to the power 134 degrees and that should be the complete expression so I'll click enter and, and so that gives us the value to put up here since I, I kept this one positive and I subtracted this one so that means I have to replace this one now because this was the one that I subtracted from so that will now be 2.564 and then the angle will be uh, 5.247 degrees. And then the other current source uh, needs to be deleted. So I'll press the delete key there because that needs to be changed to a zero value source. Um, since I've included its value over here now, that becomes a zero value or an open circuit. So now I can check this combination and that is correct. So we've been lucky here and gotten everything right. Um, so now we're done editing because we're down to a single node pair circuit uh, with one current source. So that's amenable to the current divider formula. It will be very easy to solve. So we exit the circuit editor now and we're going to select single node pair analysis. That's the only thing that would work here because we have more than one loop. And we're trying to find a SOT branch current so we can write a formula directly for that. Um, without doing any KCL equation or anything because we can use the current divider formulas that are provided. So I0 is equal to, and now we have a choice of several different terms, or you could just enter the final answer if you wanted, but um, let's use this one. And so the value of the current source here now is 2.56, uh, 56 rather, and uh, angle 5.25 degrees. And remember, in a current divider, if we're using impedances, as we are here, we need to enter the other impedance that doesn't have the SOT current in the numerator. That's the way current dividers work, unlike voltage dividers. So the Z1 here, uh, which is the other impedance, would be the 9.29 uh, plus a J2.48. And then I'll take that same value and just copy it um, so I can paste it down here. And then the other impedance would just be the 9 ohms. Now, uh, before I check this, I have to make sure I've thought about the polarity, because polarity uh, will get you if you don't pay attention to it. So this current source is pumping charge from here to here, which will then return some of it this way and some of it this way back to the original source. So since the I1S therefore has the same sense as I0, because this charge is going to go in the defined a reference direction for I0. So that, that means I need a plus sign here as opposed to a negative sign. A lot of times it'll be a negative sign, so you have to be very careful about that. Okay, so we'll check that equation, and that is correct, and that's the only equation we need. So we'll click No More Equations, and now it just wants a numerical value, so we'll have to go on our calculator again. Um, 
So now, um, again, we want our result in polar form. We have that mode. So we want uh, to enter the, um, actually, I'm just going to take, uh, I, I couldn't copy this, but I can go up here and copy the expression, actually. Um, well, I will have to put parentheses around that, though, is the only problem. Well, I'll just do it, I guess. And I'll put a close parenthesis there, and then go back over here and go into insert mode and put an open parenthesis and then go back over. Okay, so I have that uh, expression for that same value. Um, now I'll multiply that times um, this numerator, which would be 9.29. Uh, plus j 2.48, so plus i 2.48, close parenthesis, divide by the entire denominator, so I'll open my parenthesis for the denominator, and mentally I can just do that as 9.29 plus 9 is 18.29, save some typing here, um, plus j 2.48, so plus I 2.48 and that is the complete denominator so we should be done there and that will give us our value which is therefore uh, 1.336 and the phase angle there should be 12.47 degrees so let's check that, and that is correct. And so the final step then is to convert that back to the time domain, since this is a phasor, um, and that means to do an inverse phasor transform. So um, we're given the omega here directly as 50 uh, kiloradians per second, so that'll be 50,000. Remember that I cannot use a metric prefix in these text boxes. Um, and then the prefactor will be the 1.34. That's the number that multiplies the cosine to give it its amplitude. And then the phase angle that introduces the phase shift of the cosine will be 12.5 degrees. And we'll check that. And that is correct. And then we also have the option of seeing a detailed solution of this um, if you wish to do that. So that is the end of this problem.